Hello, this is Hana. So read the Bible. God provides. God provides. The praise the Lord day by day. God our Savior helps us. Psalm sixty-eight nineteen. How many names do you have? Think about it. You have your given first name and maybe a middle name. You have a last name, maybe a nickname. You might be called son or daughter, niece or nephew, grandson or granddaughter. Sometimes what you are called, that tell us, uh, tell us something about you. Did you know that God has several ta- several names that describe Him too? Yeah, one of God's name means the Lord provides. The Lord gives us 30 more God has name that we need. Sometimes He does that by providing um, others to help us in, in today's help someone needed. Wow, how many, why, why God, did God has, uh, have lots of names for, for? us, each of us. God has sent people to help you too. These people might be called mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, brother, sister, teacher, friend, quick names, many, as many people as you can who God has sent to help you. Red, set, go. Second Kings 4, yeah, 1 to 4, 7. A woman went to Eliza, the prophet of God, for help. She was very upset. Her husband had died, and he owed another man a lot of money. That uh, man has going to take the woman's two sons and make them slaves, unless she could pay what her husband owed him. Eliza asked the woman that what he had in her house. The woman said, I have nothing but a small pot of oil. So Eliza told her to get all the money, all the empty jars she could borrow from her neighbors. Take you a small pot, small pot of oil and began pouring it into all the empty jars. Eliza told her, the woman did as he said. She poured and uh, poured and poured until every jar was full. Then the woman took the jars and uh, and sold the oil to pay her debt. Now her sons got to stay at home with her, and they had plenty of money to live on. Hooray! God had provided for her. Yes, if she get more jars by her faith. Yeah, let's talk about it. What was the woman's problem? What did Eliza tell her to do? What did God do for her and her sons? Share God's love. A pot of oil. Who would have known the wo- that was all the woman and her son needed? Sons needed, but God knew, and he sent Eliza to help her. Today, God still sends people to help others. God sends people like you to provide what others need. Sometimes uh, what a person needs is something as uh, as small as someone someone to open a door. Sometimes it's very big, like someone to adopt a child or bring food to those who are hungry. You never know how God will use you to help others, but you can be sure He will. Name five ways God has used you and your family to help others. Dear Lord, so... I'm glad you provide for my needs. Please use me to help others whenever I can. Amen. My, uh, I have thus also prepared a small amount of uh, tour. I'm sorry. Uh, Yahoo, I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. Psalm 139, 14. God created the sneeze to protect us. Yeah, there is a wonderful story in the Bible about a little boy who sneezed a big sneeze. Who do you suppose it was? And why was a sneeze so important? Read the Bible story on the next page to find out. Facts about sneeze. 
you answer, you sneeze, yeah, you sneeze to clear your breathing passages. Uh, your whole body gets into it. Your nose gets into it. Your nose tickles. Your brain tells you to sneeze, and your muscles get ready for the big event. Most people, most people close their eyes when they sneeze. Do you? You sneeze at the small of pe pepper. Uh, the speed of a sneeze can be more than 100 miles per hour. Wow. So, speedily go on far. So, uh, Second Kings so, chapter 4, 8 through 37. Elias often stayed with the tsunami tsunami woman, her husband and their young son. The family had had even built a special room for Eliza on the roof of their house. One day the little boy became sick when he went out in the field where his father was harvesting grain. They took the little boy home but uh, there was nothing anyone could do. The little boy died. The tsunami Sunamai woman placed the boy on Eliza's bed. She hurried to get Eliza to bring him to help her little boy. Eliza went with the lady, lady back to her house and prayed. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, echo, echo, the little boy sneezed. Then he sneezed six more times and opened his eyes. It was a miracle. God had brought the little boy back to life. Yeah, God used the sneezing. And then sooner my woman's, you know, the good behavior, just to, uh, uh, remember the other sooner my woman's in, in New Testament. What happened to the little boy? What did God do when Eliza pray, prayed for the little boy? Has anyone ever said, God bless you, when you sneeze, many people do, and it's always good, a good way to share God's love because it's like a, saying a prayer for someone. Yeah, funny sneeze. So on a piece of paper, um, do as many round circles as there was. There are people in your family. Put eyes on each of the circles. Now think about how each person sneezes through, through a mouth and nose to show the person sneeze. How many? How funny does it look? Did you remember to draw a picture of yourself? Prayer, dear Lord, you are the one who gave me my breath and my sneezes. Thank you for my amazing body. Amen. The borrowed eggs. Do not be interested only in your own life, uh, but be in, uh, interested in the lives of others. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. How do you feel when you lose something? Are you sad? What if you had borrowed what you lost from a friend? Now the friend it belonged, it belonged to will be sad too. When we borrow something, we should take care of it as if it were the most important thing we ever had. Whether it is something very small or very big, whether it costs a lot of money or not at all. In the Bible story on the next page, a man was very sad when he lost something he had borrowed. See what God's prophet Eliza did to help the man. Yes, let's go. Second Kings, you know, verse four, verse six, one through seven. Long ago, warp tools were made by hand, and tools were expensive and rare. One day, some prophets were chopping down trees with heavy axes to build them a place to live. While they were working, a man gave a gave a strong chop to a tree with an axe. When he did that, the heavy iron on axe had flew off the handle and went right into the water. It quickly sank. Oh no, said the man, 
I borrowed that axe. He was sad. He wouldn't be able to return the axe to its owner. Eliza, the prophet, was there. He asked, where did it fall? The man showed him Eliza cut a stick and threw it into the water, and the heavy iron uh, ha axe had flooded to the surface. The man who lost it picked it up. It was a miracle. So that the kind of magic, what uh, is real things? Why do, did God allow this kind of action to, uh, to Eliza? Yeah, what happened to one man's ass while chopping down trees? What did Eliza do? What flooded to the water's surface? Do you think the ex head, ex head would have been able to plot to the top without Eliza's help? Try this experiment. The sinking penny. You will need a clear glass or plastic cup, clear water, and a penny. Uh, fill the glass three quarters full of water. Place the glass where everyone can see it. Drop the penny in the glass. Did the penny float? An accent is much heavier than a penny. Share God's love by telling someone about the amazing miracle of the floating accent. Dear Lord, help me uh, take care of anything I borrow from others as if it were my own. I want to take good care of everything. I use thank you, Lord. Amen. I did it in church. Bring the Bible, bring the prophesized book, and then give it. Gave. I'm sorry, so that I choose you. I choose you. Who knows you may have been chosen queen for just such a time as this. Esther 4, 14. Have you ever been chosen to do something uh, special? It can be lots of fun, but sometimes it can be a little scary too. Maybe you were chosen to help a teacher or tell about the trip you made, or sing a song, or be on a team to play a game. Let's read together the Bible story on the next page and find out about the beautiful young queen who was chosen by God for a very big job. She lived in Persia, which today we know as Iran. If you want to know where that is, that is ask someone to help you find it on a map. So Esther 1 through 9. And yes, Esther was an ordinary girl uh, living in Persia. And then God chose her for an extraordinary job. First, she became queen of the land, but after she was queen, one of the king's men wanted to do away with all God's people. Esther's cousin Mordecai came to her. He knew that God could use Esther to save God's people. He told her it could be that God has made you queen for just this time. So what Esther did next, next way, next uh, very courageous. Even though the king could have killed her, she went to the king and asked him to save her people. The king did what she asked? Yes, Esther. Yes, Esther. And uh, what did Esther leave? What did God choose her to do? What happened when she did what God asked? God chooses people to get his work done. You can share God's love by helping to do his work on earth. What are some ways you can help God with his work? Maybe you could give some of your toys to someone who doesn't have any. Maybe there is something you could do to help your parents, your grandparents, and even your brothers and sisters. What else can you think of that can help God with his work? Ask a grown-up to help you make a plan, then do the work you will be glad you did. Lord, dear Lord, help me to think of things I can do be do I can to do to be your helper. Amen. Yeah. Fifteen minutes almost. I love you. The, the, let's go to the right time next. Right time. Yeah. So Ecclesiastes. Let's go. Thank you.